Hello and welcome to this episode of I Don't Know Jack About Parenting. And today I'm going to talk about how you don't get it. So the big question is this. How are parents like us, who don't have a manual, who are doing the best we can, who feel as though we aren't enough, how are we going to raise healthy, happy children who we are proud of and still keep our sanity in that process? That's the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Ryan Roy, and welcome to I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, a podcast for parents who are being real with themselves. Hey, welcome back to this episode of I Don't Know Jack About Parenting, where today I want to talk about how you don't get it. See, I hear parents all the time complaining about things. Oh, I always have to pick my kids up. Oh, the kids are are sick today. I had to rearrange my schedule. And whatever those complaints are. You know, and and I I'm challenged with them also. Don't don't get me wrong. But I think I've talked about in a previous episode, I'm sure at some point, is showing appreciation for the things we do have, not focusing on the things that we don't have or schedules we have to rearrange and things of that nature. You don't get it. And what I mean by you don't get it is I want you to start getting it. What do you get to do? See, I often think of, you know, these heartfelt stories of where you see there's these parents who rearrange their entire life because their kid has autism or that their kid was born with some type of medical deficiency. Uh, There's a movie that came out not too long ago where the kid has uh, (laughs) like 17 different, um, uh, Julia Roberts is in it. I don't know the name of the movie. Um, but, but you guys will know he has uh, deformities and some some kid in the cafeteria asked him in the movies, the, the kid that became his friend, he says, hey, isn't there surgery or something you could do for your face? He's like, dude, this is after 17 surgeries. <laughs> um, but their lives got rearranged and turned upside down and they have to adapt to what the world is throwing at them and at their child. Um, And then we all feel like, oh, what an amazing story. What a heartfelt story. But yet, when we have to, you know, run over to the school in the middle of the day because our kid soiled himself, let's say. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. Now you don't get it. You get to go over to the school and comfort your child in your child's time of need. You get to get up early and bring them to the bus stop and pray to your Savior that he gets home safe that day. And for the majority of us, every single day, 180 days a year, our kid goes to school, is being taken care of by someone else, and then they come home safely. And better than they had left because they were taught and empowered throughout the day, hopefully. I get to talk to my son each day about his day at school. You get to put a band-aid on that scraped knee. You get to do this because there are people out there who have gone to great lengths to conceive and they couldn't they've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for doctors to try and get them to fertilize an egg with the sperm and it just doesn't take there are people out there who would love to adopt children but the you know the the challenges in that the paperwork just so that they could help raise a child in a healthy environment or children And some of us, so many of us, just get to do those things. Although it comes with challenges, if we look and we say to ourselves, man, I get to do these things. This morning, right now, as as I'm recording this, I'm driving over to my son's school 
because I'm a part of the, the PTA board. And I get to thank our counselors because it's Counselor Appreciation Week. And is this ideal for me to have to be doing this right now at the beginning of my day? Um, I have so many other things on my plate uh, today. But I get to go over there and acknowledge three amazing women who empower the kids who need them in the school. My son happens to not be one of those children. I am so blessed that he doesn't have to go to the counselor's office. But I still get to go and thank them for all they do for the children that sit next to my son that may need them. That make it a better learning environment for him. I get to do that. So I don't think everybody gets it. But I hope through this podcast this morning or whenever you're listening to it that you start to get it you get to do these things I get to do these things and we start coming from a place of gratitude of like man I, I, I this is so awesome I get to do these things even though they're not always convenient Then you start appreciation, the impact the other people are having on your life. You get to appreciate the impact you're having on other people's lives. Because you're getting the opportunity to do these things. And with this one last thought. Too often when I am doing something for somebody... And I'm like, you don't have to do this. I understand that. If if you guys only knew me in my everyday life, I don't do anything that I don't want to do. Um, and I often say to them, you're right, I don't have to, I get to. And I'm so grateful that I have the time, that I have the energy, that I have the desire to do things for other people. Because at the end of the day, we need each other. And most importantly, our kids need us. No judgment here on any parents. Um, I was raised to be a strong individual as a child. I was kind of forced into that role um, because my mom was a single mom. I had older siblings and she needed to be able to trust me to do certain things. Uh, I have a seven-year-old. I don't think it's a big deal. I know it's not going to be like this forever. I still tie his shoes. There's these little things that I want to, you know, grasp onto as a, as a parent as long as I need to. And it doesn't bother me to tie his shoes. And there's going to be a day that it bothers him in front of his friends when we're at an event somewhere. And you look, he's got to have his shoes tied. And he's going to learn how to tie his shoes really quickly. Um, I've seen some people with their four-year-old say, put on your jacket. Zip it up. You got it. Zip it up. And the kid's just frustrated and whatever. Man, at four years old, if you can't zip your jacket, I think that's okay. In my opinion, you get to zip that child's jacket. I still get to hold my seven-year-old boy's hand wherever we go because he's comfortable with that. And as long as he's comfortable with that, I get to do that. Because there's going to come a time. And, and, and listen, as I'm about to say this, I feel a sense of emotion coming through me and I'm tearing up a little bit. There's going to be a time that I don't get to do it and I'm going to miss it. So embrace the things you get to do. And I don't think all of you get it. And that's why I wanted to share that today. We'll see you in the next episode of I Don't Know Jack about parenting. Do you want to be the dad you wish you had? If so, go get my free book, Be the Dad You Wish You Had at be the dad you wish you had .com. Inside, you'll find my most effective 40 tips to quickly and easily transform yourself into the ideal dad. Go to be the dad you wish you had .com now and get it while it's free.